Good morning and welcome to this day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Just a couple of announcements to share with you this morning. If you are uh, the phone number to call in to watch online on your phones and printed on the, uh, the, 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 the display, uh, you can call in, you can listen to that because we are live streaming our service. Uh, it's on Facebook, and so you'll be able to uh, to see that. And furthermore, we just want to call your attention to about the uh, Sunday school on Monday at 6.30. Or actually, no, this is a COVID meeting. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it's meeting at 6.30. Then Wednesday night, uh, is Sister Rhonda Locklear will be leading uh, the Wednesday night service. And then our children's ministry, please pay attention to that. And then on Thursday night, it is our annual charge conference, which is scheduled for seven o'clock, but we're meeting as a church council at 6.30 so that we'll be able to go over the, um, the nominations that we have to approve uh, at charge conference. And so please take note of that. And the other announcements, the hanging of the greens, we're moving into the Advent season, and this is a time of preparation and preparing for uh, the coming of our Lord. Brother Dave has an announcement that he wants to share at this particular time. Thank you, preacher. I appreciate this opportunity to be in church today. I just thank the Lord for all the wonderful things that he's doing in our lives and in my life as well. Uh, one announcement that I have, uh, preacher just uh, spoke about a little bit, uh, the hanging of the greens. That will be on November 29th. And we would ask that anyone interested in coming out to help us with this year, instead of having the two large trees on the inside, we wanted to uh, decorate the four trees out front in front of the sanctuary. The four trees there, we wanted to hang some lights and some ornaments on those trees. And uh, November 29th is going to be that designated day. Um, most importantly, guys, you're very important to this church. And we're all part of Prospect United Methodist Church. And we, we want you to come out and be a part of that. We want, this, want uh, you to look back and say, man, I helped, I helped uh, put those decorations up on the tree and be proud of that. Uh, because this is your church. And we're just asking you to come out on that day uh, around 3.30, 4 o'clock. We'll gather together and uh, do some uh, other decorations. Uh, Brother Al and I have already hung. The uh, reefs, uh, most of the reefs, we have some more reefs we're going to hang down on the new sanctuary and the columns. I want to thank Sister Carolyn Dees and my mother uh, and also Sister Annie, Annie Harris, Miss Annie Mae Harris. She made, she's making the uh, bows that you see here today. We just thank the Lord that we have people willing to help and serve our church. And also I just wanted to remind the youth um, for... Uh, Tuesday night, our youth devotion. Uh, we'll be back on regular schedule at 7 o'clock. And I appreciate everyone. And just let's praise the Lord today. We're going to join together. We want you to participate with us as we join in our call to worship. We are called to be the children of light. And your response is, we come to worship to be renewed in our faith that our light might ever shine. The light of Christ is found in all that is good and right and true. We gather for worship that we might gather ourselves to do what is good and right and true to Christ. Amen. Let us, let us worship together in singing, I am thine, O Lord. I am thine, O oh Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told me thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith, and be closer drawn to 
To the cross where thou hast died, draw me nearer, 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 precious Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul lift up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in God. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord. To the precious bleeding sky, oh the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spend. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friend with friend. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the precious bleeding side. There are depths of love that I cannot know. Till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach. Till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord. To the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer. Amen. Thank the Lord that we are God's this morning. Just praise and blow your horns and give thanks to God because hallelujah, we just thank God for all he's done for us this morning. This beautiful wind that he has given us, this beautiful sunlight. Just praise the Lord. Sit back and praise the Lord this morning. Light of the world, you stepped out into darkness. Open my eyes and let me see beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all things, oh so highly exalted. Glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created. All for love's sake became whole. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God, and you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. So 
here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God and you're all together love. All together worthy. All together one. All together And I'll never go. I'll never You know, I'll tell you what, I'm not one of the best singers out here, but I'm a willing vessel, God. God has given me a willingness to sing for his glory, and it's just wonderful to look out into the cars and see y'all. I can see some of y'all's lips out there praising God, and I just thank God for what you're doing because we have a move of the Spirit here today, and I just thank and praise you today. I'm a willing vessel to, to, for him, for, to Jesus Christ, and I've had this song on my heart the last couple for weeks and I said well I'm just have to try it and uh, we're going to sing this song this is about a man that can this man called Jesus he can do all things through him and his power he gives us hope through his spirit and this is the song I know a man who can amen I can take a heart that's broken, make it over again. But I know a man who can. I can take a soul that seems to make it white as the snow. But I know a man. Oh, oh, oh,
anybody out there that's not saved and don't know this Jesus that I'm talking about this morning. But if you just get out of that car and come up this place and let us pray with you this morning. If there's anyone with a need that needs healing and deliverance, if you want to come up this morning and be and be touched by the preacher or anyone, whatever, we have Brother Ray here, he'll pray with you. But it's just on my heart to say this to people because we need to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's here to save and we're commissioned to go out and be fishers of men. And I just wanted to take that opportunity to say that this morning because I know a man who can this morning. He can do all things in Jesus Christ. Thank you this morning. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. It's just so good to be in church this morning. Lord, I could be in the hospital. We got Brother Larry with us this morning. Another miracle. We just thank God that somebody blow the horn. Brother Larry's in church this morning. Let's get excited about Jesus Christ today because he is real, guys. He is real in our hearts and minds and our bodies. And look at the beautiful wind that's blowing this morning. The beautiful. We can sit in our vehicles and be so comfortable. We think we're suffering because we're not in the church. We're not suffering. Jesus Christ suffered on the cross, bearing the cross to, that we put on him. So we are blessed this morning. Um, I want to read the prayer of illumination this morning. Y'all just have to forgive me because I get excited about Jesus. Prayer of illumination. Holy God, whose word is a light to our paths. Illumine our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. In the reading and proclamation of your scripture. Confront us in our sin. Comfort, comfort us in our sorrow. Heal our wounds and inspire us to follow you. For the sake of Christ, we pray. Amen. We want to say thank God for Brother Day and his leadership and uh, his willingness to be honest and open and transparent about his faith and his walk with the Lord. And so this morning, I want to continue this whole emphasis that we've been talking about is values. We've been talking about values, and we said that values are those things that describe and determine who we are. In other words, if you don't have ethical values, then it's going to reflect in how you treat each other, how you live out your faith, and how you relate to the Lord. And so this morning, I'm going to call your attention to Ephesians chapter 5, beginning with verse 15 
and 21. Listen to these words that Paul wrote to the church. He says, look carefully when, uh, 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 look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. And therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all of your heart, always and for everything, giving thanks in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father, be subject one to another of reverence for Christ. Now, I want to ask you something this morning. What is your greatest capability? In other words, what is the thing that you feel that you are really good at? One, another, another way to say it is, what are your gifts? Well, and after thinking about it, some of you might say, well, you know, I'm a good mechanic. I'm good with my hands. Other of you are excellent in math. Some of you like to sew. Others of you are excellent farmers. There's a lot of good cooks at Prospect and a lot of good teachers. And there's a lot of people who love to serve. But I want to make a suggestion to you this morning that those are not your greatest abilities or capabilities. The greatest ability that you and I have in this day and time is responsibility. That we have a responsibility to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. Responsibility is the ability, you know what? to respond to what is going on in the world and in your life. One of the greatest gifts that God has given you is the ability and the capability to be responsible. It's a gift. And you see, God created you and he made us not only human, but he made us in his likeness. And what makes you and I a human being is our ability to make choices, to choose, to respond to what is going on in life. You can respond in many ways to stress, the problems we have, the crisis, the opportunities, the relationship. You know what? It's all a choice. We have the ability to choose. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how most of us uh, live our lives and our lives are out of control. And you know why I say that? For example, you didn't choose when you were going to be born in this world. You didn't choose a lot of the circumstances and the events that has come about in your life. But you listen, but you do have the freedom this morning to choose how you act how you live, how you respond to circumstances that goes on in your life. You and I, we have the freedom to choose how we respond to things that go on when we don't have control. And because you have that choice, because you have that freedom to choose, you can respond either in a positive way or you can respond in a negative way. Paul was saying to the church at Ephesus, live your life responsibly. Take ownership for what's going on in your life. Because you see, we live in an excuse, excuse world. We're always blaming other people, other circumstances for what we have to deal with. And it's time, friends, that we grow up and we become who God has called us to be and, be and take ownership for what we know is our responsibility. You know, Justice Brandis, 
he served in the, uh, as a Supreme Court Justice from 1919 to 1939, and he said something that is really insightful. He said this, responsibility is the greatest developer for owning up to who we are. And when we own who we are, then you know what happens? We then become mature in our faith. When we're always trying to bring somebody else, when we're not taking responsibility for our home, our relationships, what we do, who we go, where we go, if you know what's happening to, uh, about all of that, we're just saying that it's not me, it's somebody else that's doing it. That is not what the scriptures tell us to do. We are responsible for what we do in this life. And we need to own that up and we need to, and so today, we're going to talk about those values on which we build as pillars in our lives, the right values to build a successful life and a significant life deals with our ability to accept responsibility. We have to start with personal responsibility. And this is the foundation. This is ground zero. This is the bottom line. And if you don't get this, our friends, you're going to miss the red. You're going to miss it all. You know, one of the things we need to understand, and that is this, that we have a responsibility to own who we are, and furthermore, to do what God has called us to do as well. It's very obvious that in the last 40 years, there has been this dramatic decline in the acceptance of personal responsibility in our society. Nobody wants to accept responsibility for anything anymore. In fact, we want to accuse and excuse, and we want to excuse ourselves because I'm not the fault. Somebody else done this to me. Well, I want to say to you, you have a responsibility, and I have a responsibility to own up to who we are. And when we do that, your life, your relationship, will be better. You know, last week I said that our beliefs determine our behavior. Don't forget that principle. Whatever you believe in will determine how you live your life. If you don't believe in anything, if you believe in a careless kind of lifestyle, you're going to live that. If you're not a kind of person who doesn't take responsibility for what you do, your family and other things, you know, your family is going to see that. We need to understand responsibility is something that we must own. You know, we talked last week uh, in the past couple of weeks about what is it that has influenced our society to the point that has brought us to this place. Well, we, we mentioned three of them. We said it's individualism, whatever I want, that's the most important thing that matters. And the other one is secularism. God doesn't exist anymore, and it's relative. There's no absolute truths anymore. And we believe that. We, some of us, live that way. But let me share something with you, friends. There is a better way, and Paul is saying to us, in the book of Ephesians, that we are to live our lives according to the biblical principles that's been laid out in God's word. There are three values that are very prevalent for today. Three beliefs that are antithesis to personal responsibility. And I'm going to name them. You know, these are the three foes of personal responsibility. One of them is called the rights mentality. In other words, I demand my rights. I have a right to do this. The second one is called the victim mentality. It's not my fault. It's somebody else's fault. And the third one is the entitlement mentality. I deserve it. And so we're going to talk about those three. So first of all, let's talk about uh, the rights mentality basically goes something like this. I have my rights, and that is all that I am interested in. Would you agree with me today that our society is obsessed with personal rights? 
um, Leo wrote in the New York uh, uh, World Report, he says this. I want you to hear this. Today, you know, uh, America is filled and swamped and awash with uh, rights talk. In other words, uh, criminals have rights. Computers have rights. Animals have rights. Children have rights. You know, victims have rights. Abortions have rights. Housing have rights. Privacy has rights. Everybody's got a right. We even have a right to know the sex of a fetus before it's ever been born into the world. We, I want to know what my rights are. And I don't care what nobody has to say. Just as long as I own my own right. Let me share something with you, friends. There comes a time in our relationship when we got to sit back and say, Lord, what is right in your sight? And ever since then, it's my right. Everybody's walking around today with an AR-15. You know, and what they say, well, why do you own that gun? He says, well, I'm going to go hunting with it. Who in heaven's name goes deer hunting with an a, a, a AR-15? I don't understand that, but it's my right. I have a right to do it. Well, you do have a right to own that. But does it make sense for you to do something like that? Well, you know, people have a right even not to even report when they catch COVID-19. You don't have to tell a, nobody that you have contracted COVID-19. But you do have a responsibility to let others know what's going on around you because you know what? We live as a community of faith. It's just not about what I want. Everybody, you know, you know, we, we've heard about the Bill of Rights, haven't we? I think now we've come to a Bill of Responsibility. You know, I want to say that we all, we all, you know, already have uh, the Bill of Rights, but we also have another right, too, and it's called the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments that will lay out for us what we need to do, live, and hear. We hear a lot today about people's rights. We don't have very much, uh, hear very much about responsibility anymore. We hear about entitlement. We don't hear much about obligations. Uh, we hear a lot uh, about me, but we don't hear a lot about what it does to other people. We certainly hear a whole lot more about choice, and we hear a little, and we have hear very little about commitment. And so this morning, I want us to look at them at this value. What do I need to be? so that I can be responsible. And here's the second mindset that we have in our country. You know what it's called? It's called the victim mentality. I want you to hear this. The victim mentality basically goes like this. You know, none of my problems is my fault. In fact, they're all your fault. We blame. And you know how you spell blame? I'm going to spell it for you this morning. B hyphen lame, L-A-M-E. Every time you blame somebody else for your unhappiness in your life, you know what's happening? You're just being lame. That's what it is. You just, you don't want to take responsibility for that somebody else has caused all of this. Paul is telling us we have a responsibility and therefore we need to own it. Recently, there's been uh, several books that's out there, and one of them's entitled A Nation of Victims, uh, The Decay of America and Our Culture. And, and there were several uh, illustrations in this book that caught my attention. I just want to share a couple of them with you this morning. For example, talking about individuals who failed to take responsibility. An FBI agent embezzled now, these are true stories, $2,000 from the government, and then uh, he loses all of it in an afternoon of gambling in Atlantic City. You know, he's fired, but he wins reinstatement after a court rules that uh, his affinity with gambling with other people's money is a handicap, and thus a handicap is protected under 
federal law. You ever heard such of a thing? Well, that's what happens, friends. And there's another prefer, you know, a person was fired consistently for showing up late at work, you know, as a former school district employee. And you know what he did? He turned around and he sued the school district. And the court, the, the court ruled and basically said that this person has a chronic lateness syndrome and therefore we had to reinstate him back to being to his job nobody anymore wants to take responsibility for something for anything it's somebody else's fault i didn't have anything to do with that you done paul is saying to us we are to live our lives according to the leading and the direction of god and uh, in the teachings of scripture so in Farmington, Massachusetts, uh, a young man, hear this, he steals a car from a parking lot and is killed while driving it. His family then sues the title holder of the parking lot for failing to take steps to prevent such a theft. You know, it's your fault that he stole the car. You see, this is prevalent in our society. A man who owned, you know, who by his own admission, now listen to this. I never heard such a thing in all my life. Expo, you remember when streaking was going on in this country? Oh God, oh my, you know, remember, you know what he did? He listen, listen to this. This is this is the true story. You know, he exposed himself 10,000 times. And then he was convicted for, uh, you know, for streaking on 30 different occasions. And you know what he did? He applied for a job in a parking lot and they wouldn't hire him, rightfully so. But you know what he did? He sued on the grounds that he never exposed himself in a parking lot and therefore he was not found guilty. And you know what they had to do? They had to give the man a job in the parking lot. Friends, isn't that something? We've come to a point in our nation where nobody wants to take responsibilities for anything else. We are a nation filled with victims, friends, and none of it is my fault. It's everybody else's fault. I have my rights, and therefore, I'm not responsible. Listen, we're responsible. God told us we're responsible, and we need to start acting like we're responsible as well. Now, and then here comes uh, the third antithesis to personal responsibility. You know what that's called? The entitlement responsibility. The entitlement mentality basically says this, I deserve it. Uh, the world owes me a living. And this is a kind of a strange combination that came about from uh, those of us who are baby boomers. Now, listen, there's 76 million of us who are baby boomers. You know, and we are, you know what happened to us? We were raised, most of us was raised on a popular book by Dr. Benjamin Spock's book, that basically, you know, says this. You know, you remember that book. And the book says, Lee, this is what he say, it says about how you raise your children in this book. He says, just leave the little tyrant alone. And if he wants to throw jello uh, all over the place in the room, just go ahead and let him throw it. You don't want to harm his creativity. And so we have a whole generation of baby boomers who want to do everything that is wrong and we don't want to do nothing right. We don't want to take responsibility for anything else. We just want to live into our creativity and do what we want to do. Well, friends, I'm sorry to and be a baby boomer. You can be a baby jumper. You can be a baby jumper. But I want to tell you something this morning. You've got some responsibility and you need to start with your children, helping them to understand who God has called us to be. Stop blaming everybody else for the condition that you, our whole community and society is in. We need to take responsibility 
uh, for that. Well, I just want us to remember, you know, you know what we've become? We've become a nation of pointing, of finger pointers. We point out the faults of everybody else, but we never are willing to say, it's me. It's me. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a disease. But I want to say this, that's, you know, I want to share this with you, what Paul has to say in Galatians about our responsibility. You know, when we start running around, it's not my fault, it's not my fault. Galatians chapter verses seven and eight says this, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man will reap what he sows, and whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap destruction, and whoever sows to please the Spirit and from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Friends, we cannot get by that principle because it has already been sealed in heaven. We're going to have to either live by it or we'll suffer the consequences by it. And so what we just need to do and start taking responsibility for who and what we are. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul says this, live life as a sense of responsibility, not as those who don't know the meaning of life, but as those who do. A set, listen, it's a sense of responsibility. God says you're to live your life and I'm to live my life with a sense of responsibility. But more important than that, he says that we have to own what we do. He says, you know, that we are the ones. We have to own the risk and take responsibility for how we live, how we act, and how we treat each other. On the other hand, if you are living an irresponsible life, it just means one thing. You don't know the meaning of life. That's a fact. Because responsibility will help you understand the meaning of life. Irresponsibility will not. You don't know your own purpose. You don't know why God put you on this planet in the first place. And therefore, the key to living a responsible life is to figure out, Lord, why did you put me here? Why am I created? What is it that you're calling me to do? And the first thing we must deal with is why should I relive a responsible life? There's three reasons I'm going to give you. I hope I, hope I can get through this before we have to. I, and I want you to write these down. You know why we need to live a responsible life? First and foremost, because God's watching each and every one of us. We are not going to get by. He knows what we're doing. And you know, in the Bible says, in the book of Hebrews, nothing in all of the world can be hidden from God. Everything is open before him. And to him, we must explain the how we live. God sees it all and is going to judge us one day and evaluate our lives on how we have lived our life. And if you don't get anything else that I'm trying to say this morning, I hope and pray that you will get this. Life, friends, is a test of responsibility. It is a test. That is why we're going through all of this. God planned it. God is helping us to understand who and what we are to do and to be as the body of Christ. And I hope and pray that we never, ever fail to forget what God's called us to do. God put you here on earth for two reasons. I hope you get these. Number one, number one, to get to know him personally through his son, Jesus Christ. And number two, he put you here on earth to develop character. I want you to hear that. He put you here to develop character. And, I, and I, you may not believe this, but it is factual. You need to understand that. 
to become more like God uh, is a trait of God's love and work in your life. And here's another thing that you need to, you're not going to carry anything else away from uh, when you die and leave this. You're not going to carry your phone, not carry your money. You're not going to carry one. The only thing that you're going to take eternity is your character. You know how you decided to live your life and the values that you live by. You know, several centuries uh, before uh, Jesus came into the world, Alexander the Great. You know, came out of the Medit- uh, out of uh, Macedonia and Greece to conquer the Mediterranean world. You know, he didn't uh, know it, but God was using him to prepare the whole world, whole world to receive Christ. And that's when the Greek language became the universal language of all of the then known world. But one of the things that happened. One of his soldiers was misbehaving. And no matter what they tried to do, they couldn't get him to stop behaving badly. And so Alexander the Great called for him. He says, I want you to come see me. And so when he got there, he asked him, he says, son, he says, what's your name? And he says, my name is Alexandra. And uh, Alexander the Great said to him, he says, soldier, He says, I'm going to say this to you one time and one time only. Either you change your behavior or you change your name. Because what you're doing is not living up to the standards that you're supposed to live. Friends, you can walk around and put all these bumper stickers that you want to on your car. You can honk for Jesus. You can do all of that stuff. But I want to say to you this morning, if you do not live for him, you can forget about it. You just need to take him off your car. (laughs) <laughs> and we need to we need to remember we 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 need to remember that you know <laughs> what is interesting is that our character friends is what god is pleased with that's what we ought to be putting in our bank accounts why because it's the only thing that we're going to take with us into eternity nothing else you know i've uh, I know you've had this before, and you know about it. You've run into people, and you've heard you've heard that their name goes before them. This uh, I don't know you, but I know about your reputation. You know that, and I know those of us who used to hang around in these little joint places. You know, there's always somebody. Those little you thought you know. Sometimes we thought we were pretty bad, but there was always somebody there who had a reputation that was a lot worse than yours. And you know what? And when you got there, you know what had to happen? You had to stand aside because this person's reputation was a lot different and a lot worse than yours. And you see, that you're not going to carry a reputation with you into glory. You're going to carry your character with you. And that's the only thing that matters in this life. You know, all of our material possessions, you know, we may be here 50, 60, or 80 years. But the one thing that we're going to take with us into eternity is our name. Notice what the Bible says. Each of us will have to give a personal count to God. And that means that nobody is going to do it for you. Your wife can't do it for you. Your pastor can't do it for you. You know, you're going to have to give a personal account. You know, sometimes I tell you what's going to happen to all of us. You know, every um, I, I don't like this, but it happens every year. You know, when you have to fill out your income tax. Oh, mercy. You know, and, and what happens is you sit down with an auditor and you lay out uh, uh, all of your expenses for the year. And you know what? You have to give an accounting. And sometimes when we don't give an accurate accounting, you know, the IRS just may audit you. You ever had an audit? Oh, oh. Well, I'm going to say this to you. One day God's going to audit your life and he's going to audit my life. <laughs> he's going to do that. He's going to audit our lives. And if we've lived responsibly, we're going to sit back and say, 
go ahead, Jesus, it's okay. You know, it's all right because I sought to do what you have called me to do. Daniel Webster once said, and I'm closing with this, that the most, listen, that the most important ideal I ever thought was the day I realized that I am personally and individually accountable to God for how I live my life. And Paul says that this, that God knows everything in your life and in my life, and that means that he's seen everything that you've ever done. And it is interesting because when we realize our irresponsibility of the ways in which we have lived, nobody else, nobody else can give an account for it but you and me. And so, you know, here's the, here, and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop with this. You know, there's another reason why we have become the society that we have become and why we ought to be willing to seek to live the kind of life that God's called us to live. Do you realize that everything that we do in this life affects somebody else? That's right. It impacts somebody else's life. People should be concerned about others and not just about ourselves. I don't know if you remember this, but back in the 60s, you know, during the, uh, the hippie movement, there used to be these beautiful psychedelic uh, posters. I even put some of them up in my room. You know what I did? I put a, I painted, I, I painted the, uh, the, uh, the walls in my room purple. I hung a fish fishnet up in my room. Oh, I thought I was being cool. Well, listen, you know, some of those signs that was out there was, you know, it, it, was, it was basically just a demonstration that we felt that we were being groovy. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning, it's not about being groovy. It's about being faithful. It's about being obedient to the call of God. I don't care what they say sometimes. We, we even say this, but we need to understand that what we do, what we believe, and what we say will make a difference in the world in which we live. Now, friends, I hope and pray that as we move through this cycle of dealing with our own values, that we invite the Holy Spirit to begin to talk to us, how am I living the life that I am living? Is it, is it a faithful life? Or is it a life that I'm just going to be careless and do anything that I want to do? Listen, the Bible says, be ye sure. Now, Moses said this to the children of Israel. Now, he, he says, be ye sure your sins will run you down. They'll find you out. Now, we may hide them from one another, hide them from others. But God is our witness that they, will, they matter and God will help us. I hope and pray that he will help us come to terms with all that we deal with so that we can be more faithful to him. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for the wonderful blessings that you give to us. And Lord, uh, we know that when we live for you, you've promised us that you will, you will reward us. You promised us that you would walk with us. And I pray this morning, if there's somebody who's struggling with uh, issues in their lives that they have not resolved, that, oh, God, that you will come and speak to them this morning. That wherever they're sitting, they can deal with that right where they are. Because I believe, Lord, you are ready to help them to deal with what they have to deal with. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not innocent. I have my faults. I fail every single day of my life. But one thing I've learned, Lord, is that I've learned to always be honest with you. And gracious God, thank you for that. Thank you for that growth in my life. And so now we pray that you will continue to walk with us and to lead us and direct us as the body of Christ. We offer this prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Now, friends, I'm going to share with you a few people that we're praying for. We want to keep Miss Betty Dial.
uh, in our prayers. Betty has been hospitalized. We need to pray for Halford as well. Miss Karen Dial, all of our cancer patients. Craig will be having, Locklear will be having uh, surgery in uh, a few uh, days. And let's keep Craig in our uh, prayers. We need to pray for Ray Locklear. We need to pray for Miss Stephanie Hunt. Stephanie will be going, which will be having some further tests, and we need to be praying for her as well. Let's continue to play, pray for Blaine. Uh, let's pray for uh, Danielle and Casey McMillan. These are all persons related to family members in our church, and we want to keep these individuals in our press. Now, I'm sure you have individuals that you're praying for as well. And so begin to pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. You know us, heard the cry. Dealing or we bring them to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Brother Ray is going to come now and he is going to. Pray with us and thank you, Brother Sam, for reminding us about our responsibility. And we have the responsibility to be faithful stewards with our tithes and offerings to support the church and its mission. Let us pray. Spirit of wind and fire. Bless these gifts of our labor and transform them into your work in this world. Make them to be a blessing for all who search for your bounty. May your spirit continue to call us forth to live a life of giving so that he can say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank, thank you, Preacher Ray. Uh, let us sing our last song, closing song today. <clears throat> Take my life and let it be. Take Each 
shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. It shall be thy royal throne. Take my love, my Lord, I adore. At thy feet it's treasure store. Take myself and I will be ever only all for thee. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Go with us till we meet again. Amen. And now.